morning everyone welcome to my second video and I've stuck to the plan for now in that I'm recording on a Monday can't promise I'll do that every week but I will aim to um, so it's been a pretty good week we're back online properly now which is really really great so I've been really enjoying getting on with things online um, also a little bit of creativity too um, not that much because we're still sorting out a lot of things from our move but I've been enjoying doing a little bit of creating every day um, and even though I haven't done so much creating I do feel like I've been gaining some inspiration just from having a little change in environment even though we haven't moved that far so I'll be talking about that later on in the video as well um, so um, I'm going to show you what I've been working on first of all. So I've been using this organic, this fine organic cotton, which I just bought on an impulse really in a local eco shop. If you're ever in Broadstairs, pop into Salt of the Earth. It's a, a great shop and they sell some really interesting ethically made products. Um, so this is going to be a double, maybe even a triple plant hanger. So you can see that it's quite long and just a little tip here for anyone else who likes making plant hangers and wants to give it a go i tend to hang my plant hangers particularly these long ones from one of those uh, clothes drying racks one of those ones that kind of folds and then you pull it out and it stands up i can actually show it in another video um, but yes yeah, so i tend to hang them from there and then that means that all the extra cord that I haven't used yet I can kind of hang over one of the racks as well so I find that a really really practical way to work if you have a different way of working then uh, yeah do let me know in the comments it's always interesting to know um, so yeah so I'm working on that oh and also I'm going to show you I love upcycling beads sometimes I hang on to them for ages before I find something that I want to add them to but I've added this bead here uh, just wrapped with some copper wire which I did a while ago as well practicing wrapping copper um, but I just think it works well on this plant hanger um, so that's what I've been doing and I did also say last time that I would show you one of my plant hangers actually with a pot in it so you can have a look and see what that's like so this is one of my favorite color cords to work with I just love this pale blue it was always my favorite color when I was a child as well I see there's a stone plant in there another one of my childhood favorites would also look really good with a training plant but I think you can really see the plant hanger with this particular one and then um, this pot here which I just picked up in a charity shop was really pleased with that so yes, the, the plant hanger itself is actually available from our website. I'll put the, the link below. Really enjoyed making this one. We've got these cross knots here, which take quite a long time to do. It's still quite enjoyable. And then this style of ending the plant hanger, which I got from a brilliant macrame maker, macrame artist and uh, YouTuber called Made in May. So I think that's a really, really nice style of finishing the plant hanger. And you can do variations of that. Hers might have been a little bit different, um, but it's definitely a variation of how she ended the plant hanger. And then just mixed it up with some of my favourite knots there. So that's that one. And just talking about picking up things in charity shops and bric-a-brac shops. There was this lovely little pot that I got in a bric-a-brac shop and I just made, sort of custom made this plant hanger to go with it, again using that fine cotton that I'm enjoying using at the moment. Uh, so I might actually give this one away in the giveaway. And so I'll have a little think about that. I might actually start that next weekend, we'll see. Okay, so I'm now going to talk a little bit about my plants and how they've been doing this week. So, I particularly love cacti and succulents, but all sorts of plants really. I love this bamboo that we've now got in the garden that's just behind me. I don't know much about looking after it, but I do think it's really lovely. So I'm pleased with that. That's a real bonus. 
So, there are lots of cacti and succulents out here still. We've got this little one here, which I think is probably a species of Mammalaria, so I'm not sure. I've still got pretty much all my cacti and succulents out in the garden because we've got quite a mild climate here in the southeast of England. Um, do you tend to do that? Do you keep yours in the garden? I feel it really kind of invigorates them and uh, I think they like that break out in the fresh air in the summer but I probably will have to bring them in soon. In fact some I already have done and some of them including some stone plants have been munched by slugs so I've had to bring them in just to look after them. Other ones that are inside at the moment because I think the slugs would like them. Uh, these are Echeveria, Black Prince at cuttings so I'm propagating these so you can see this is incredible I'll just leave it there for a moment so that the camera can try to focus so that is actually a little plantlet growing from the leaf and so and all I did was I just put them on some top of some well draining soil so I put I took the leaves off the plant or they might have even fallen off and put them on top of that well draining soil and then some of them, not all of them, but some of them then form little plantlets, little plants grow out of the, the leaf in the form of rosettes. And first of all, there's kind of the rosettes are sticking up quite high in the air, but then I think with gravity that as the leaf shrivels and they take the goodness from the leaf, then the rosette falls and then naturally begins to root into the soil. So I'm pleased with how they're doing, but yes, yeah, still looking after those ones inside. Um, what else can I say about my plant? Well, we've got this uh, patchy something. I've actually forgotten the name. I think it's a patchy phytum or something like that. Um, but yeah, lovely one. So we can see that that's coming into flower. That's really nice. Not quite sure if I can keep that out here over winter or not. Might just have to look out for frost. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about inspiration now this week. So something that I do keep going back to are, are trees. And I'm yeah, very, very interested in looking at, the, particularly at the moment, the, the different forms of the leaves that we have on the trees and taking inspiration from those. I read it recently in a book on Macrami, which I can also reference in the notes, um, that quite often as a macrame artist it might be more interesting to look at individual elements of something in nature like the wing of a butterfly rather than the whole butterfly or the leaf of a tree rather than the whole tree itself and to take inspiration from that for your work so i've got that in mind at the moment so i particularly want to look at trees this week and pay attention to the different leaf forms and then do something creative with that. I'm actually thinking of going back to doing a bit of pastel drawing maybe later in the week or maybe even a little bit of painting which I haven't done much of at all. Um, so that's where I'm getting inspiration at the moment and that relates to our new environment too I think because we've actually moved somewhere that in some ways is a bit more urban and busy and animated but it's also a, a much leafier part of town I'm finding. So we've got these nice sort of little greens and it's close to a little wood, a micro wood, I think I would call it, because it really is quite small, but it's certainly big enough to take inspiration from it. So that's what I'm looking at particularly this week and then thinking about how I can incorporate that into Macrami and maybe other art forms as well. I'm actually planning that on Friday I just want to have a really chilled out, relaxed day just playfully doing art and maybe spend say half a day just by myself um, just sort of reconnecting and doing that. Um, makes me think as well of forest bathing which I did a couple of years ago and I found that really beneficial as well just having that quiet time to be by myself just to really slow down I can feel my voice slowing down now as I'm talking about it. Just that time to listen, because I think it's so important that we do take that time out for ourselves. And in fact, I read a quote last night, 
by Carl Jung, so I'm just going to read it out. It's not one that I'd read before, so I'm not really that familiar with it. So his quote was, Your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. So your vision will become clear only when you can look into your own heart. So that's Carl Jung. And I think it's so important to take that quiet time to be able to do that. So I've gone from talking about being inspired by trees and leaf forms and how I can use that in my art, but also looking at that as a kind of environment where I can go and sit with the trees and just be for a little while. So I do intend to do that. I might not actually talk with them. I was walking with my daughter and my husband the other day and I actually there was this beautiful tree and we both commented on it or my husband and I commented on it and um, I actually put my hand on the tree. I didn't talk to it but a man did walk past and asked my daughter, does she talk to trees? Or talks to trees does she? Yes I think that's the way he phrased it. Um, but no I don't tend to do that um, but I do just uh, generally find it very calming just to spend that quiet time in nature. Um, so I'm just thinking if there's anything in particular else to talk about this week? Oh yes, just two more things. Um, I am thinking, maybe not quite ready to do this yet because I just want to investigate it a little bit, but with certain pieces that I make and sell is to donate a certain percentage towards a charity that goes to supporting or, or helping maintain woodland. Um, so again, sort of giving something back and also keep in keeping with the, the, the theme of the week that I seem to be working with, which is trees. So if you have any recommendations for charities that which relate to woodland, please do let me know. And yeah, and then the other little thing is that I'm going to be making some plum compote this afternoon. Uh, again, going back to trees, funnily enough. A friend of mine just bought around two huge bags of plums, Victoria plums, and so I'm just going to um, put them into a pan with some cloves and other spice maybe and um, maybe a little bit of uh, orange peel or orange zest or something like that and just letting that simmer a little bit to make some nice compote which I, I love to add to porridge in the morning so another good thing that's come from the trees so uh, what are you up to today are you going to spend some time doing something nice or something creative maybe and I also consider things like making that plum compote creative and I think it's good to have lots of different sort of contrasting activities like that. Um, yeah, so I think that's it from me for today. But yeah, do comment. Um, let me know if you've got any questions that you want to ask about anything that I've said or anything that you've thought of as a result of something that I've said. Just do let me know. I'm always happy to read your comments. Thank you very much and hope to see you next week on Monday. Bye.